So all forms of energy can be described by rearranging nuclear or chemical bonds? Yes. Let me show you. Let's start with everyone's favorite, the sun. Solar power. Inside the sun, you're rearranging nuclear bonds into more stable states. The hydrogen from the sun turns into helium. In this process, an enormous amount of energy is released. And the part that comes to Earth predominantly is photons, electromagnetic radiation from the sun. That energy was created because the sun is a plasma and the sun is very hot. That heat of the sun is a result of those rearrangements of the nuclear bonds into the more stable states. Of course, when that sunlight gets to Earth, we can do a variety of useful things with it, like turn it into electricity through solar photovoltaics. Now the sunlight does a variety of other good things for us too. It allows us to grow food. And that food, or even things that we don't eat, biomass can be used for energy as well. Plants undergo photosynthesis and they take ultimately the sun's energy, the rearrangement of those nuclear bonds into more stable states, and build them into a variety of things quite useful. Here's a cornfield, you have both the green mass, and of course you have the corn. Nice big handfuls of corn that one could distill or otherwise turn into useful products. Sometimes, instead of growing a grain, you can just grow the green biomass itself, methcanthus here, or take the byproducts, like the hulls of rice, after you go out and eat the rice, the hulls can still be used as an energy source, transforming the sun's solar energy into energy that we probably will directly burn, perhaps to make heat or to make steam to generate electricity. Now, the sun does more than just shine on the earth. It shines on the earth unevenly. And you might say, why is that important? Well, what it does, if I get a little bit warmer area in one part of the planet than another, I will get a difference in pressure. And a difference between those high and low pressures means that there is movement of the atmosphere. There's wind. Another cause of wind is that the Earth rotates, which we'll get to. But predominantly it is the sun, therefore the rearrangements of nuclear bonds in the sun, that gives us wind power. And wind power is useful because you can have windmills. An advantage of which is that they even work when the sun isn't shining. The solar effect of the sun on the planet to create wind continues even when the sun isn't shining. Windmills can come in a variety of formats. They can be used for electrical generation or in this case for pumping water. Wind farms are gaining immense popularity, especially in the Midwest where we have flat areas with predominantly steady winds coming in that can be captured, like the ones you see here. The wind also pushes at the water. And since our Earth is covered 71% with water, there's a lot of surface area for the wind to push against. And when the wind pushes against the water, you can get waves. And there are even clever schemes to be able to get energy from waves, like this one. And so you might say, how is this machine, which bends and moves to the waves, therefore turning that wave energy to something mechanical, which can ultimately generate electricity, how is that rearrangement of nuclear chemical bonds? Well, the waves come from the wind, the wind comes from the sun, the sun comes from nuclear rearrangement of bonds. Now there's another form, actually one of the leading forms of renewable energy across the planet, and that's hydroelectric power. Hydropower is only possible because it rains. And if that rain occurs at a higher elevation, I can now capture that water 
And as it flows downhill to something lower, ultimately to the sea, I can capture its potential energy, the fact that it fell at a high position, and turn that into mechanical energy in a variety of hydroelectric dams. Hydropower, once again, traces its energy source from the rain, and of course it rains because of the sun. The sun heats up the earth, heats up the water on the earth, it evaporates it, it goes up into clouds, the clouds rain. And the sun is rearrangements of nuclear bonds in its core. So all of these forms of renewable energy, solar, biomass, wind, waves, hydropower, it's a pretty direct, obvious connection to the sun. The next clip will show you how even some of the other forms of renewable energy can trace their origins back to the same type of energy principle, the rearrangement of chemical or nuclear bonds into a more stable state.